Okay, this video is going to focus on the start of the second chunk in respect to topic one, nature of business. So in the last chunk, we're looking at the role of business, so things like employment, innovation, entrepreneurship, uh, quality of life. But this uh, chunk is going to look at classifying businesses, looking at the different types of businesses in terms of their size, in terms of uh, where they're located geographically and their role within the economy. And as you can see there, uh, what I was just saying, so in terms of geographical spread, in terms of the industry in which they operate, in terms of how they're structured from a legal perspective, and then we'll look at how the choices that uh, business owners make in the context of choosing their appropriate legal structure. So there's a few things to understand in the context of the classification of businesses. And that, firstly, is that there is no one universal formula for determining whether a business is classified as small, medium or large in size. I've said over the last couple of weeks that a small business is generally those that employ uh, up to five people and then a small, medium enterprise is one that employs between five and 20 and then large is um, 20 to 20 and larger. But that's not a universal definition. That's just really, to some degree, my own definition. Uh, so the, the point being that there's no one single way to classify these businesses, but we'll look at some different ways that you could look to classify businesses according to their size. Uh, and not, sorry, not just size, but also other ways that we might look to classify businesses, uh, not just size related. And some of those areas uh, are a quantitative measure so a statistical measure. So, for example, we might look to classify a business to determine whether it's small, medium or large in terms of how many employees that particular business employs. We could look at how many, what are the number of owners that a business has. Could look at it from a perspective of its market share. So how much of a market does a particular business have? What percentage of that total market does it have? That might help us to classify a business. And you could also, the fourth way you could look at it is from a legal structure perspective. So in the context of an example of a business, Boost Juice being one of those, you could look at Boost Juice and determine what size business it is because of the number of employees that it has. Does it have five? Does it have 19? Does it have 41? And what does that mean in terms of classifying Boost Juice? You could also look at how many owners it has. Uh, is it a public company with many, many shareholders? Uh, therefore, that would you know, fall into the large category. Is it a partnership that has three partners? Uh, or is it a, um, a private company that has 15 uh, private investors or private shareholders? Uh, on top of that, you could look at it from a market share perspective. So Boost Juice is a business that, has, that, that operates in the, I suppose you call it the health food sector. What percentage market share does it have? If it's got a significant market share, does that mean that from a quantitative perspective, it is a large business, even if it's operating in a relatively small industry? Uh, or if it is a, it could be a large business that operates in a large industry, but only has a relatively small amount of market share. Does that mean that it is a small uh, business? And then in the context of legal structure, different types of legal structure definitely lend themselves to uh, the classifications because, for example, a sole trader is a, is a business that's run just by the owner. That means there are no other employees. So by nature, that would suggest from a quantitative perspective that it's a small business. But then, as I said before, public companies up, there, up here, uh, in Australia, a public company must have more than 50 shareholders a private company can have up to 50 shareholders. So those uh, classifications of those types of business entities, does that mean that the businesses that are operating under those legal structures have quantitative fall into a certain classification of a business? So I suppose the answer to those questions are that there is no, there are no hard and fast rules. There is no one way to define a business. Uh, we really focus on definitions based on the number of employees, but that's not to say that's the, the correct way and the only way. And there are definitely other ways to classify a business. You could also classify a business in terms of the qualitative characteristics of a business, i.e., for example, does the owner or separate management make decisions? Who are the key decision makers in this business? 
the capital that the business has got access to, where has that come from? If it's been from shareholders, does that is that mean that it's different to a sole trader? Does the business dominate the market? Does the business operate in one suburb or across several cities or overseas? So from a geographical spread perspective, does that have an influence on the type of the classification of that business? The, 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 I suppose the answer to all these questions and the bottom line is that a comprehensive definition of business size relies on a combination of all of these factors, on all these quantitative factors and qualitative measurements and descriptions. And again, there is no one single way to, to do it, to classify. Here's a, um, some statistics or some information that relates to this size, businesses in Australia. This is from 2012 to 2016, showing any ch significant changes. I think the one significant change is that there was a drop in 2012 for the sole traders, i.e. those businesses that are not employing other people. And that has recovered over time between 2012 and 2016 to now sole traders being, once again, a fairly significant uh, type of business if we classify by size. Uh, and you can see a similar trend for those employing one to four, so those um, what we would call micro businesses, and then small to medium, medium to large, and then large, we haven't really seen much change. Here's some statistics from the Australian Bureau of Statistics and I'll go through those in class. Okay, and I'll stop that there in terms of the classification of business by size. The important thing to note is that there is no one way to define them, but it's, it's good to have a look at the different ways that you might classify a business uh, by size and to consider different um, qualitative and quantitative aspects.